The pan-Yoruba social political organization, Afeni Fere, has expressed support for calls by the Southern Governors Forum that presidency should be zoned to the South in 2023. Now, the National Secretary General of the Association, Shola Ebiseni, stated this in a statement issued. He said that it was President Umar Musa Yaradwa that was elected on 29th of May 2007 and died May 5th of 2010, who could not complete his eight years, thereby supposedly depriving the North of some four years. He also called on political stakeholders from the South to not be leered into the unpatriotic step of seeking such other positions as national chairman of main political parties, but join forces to demand and ensure that the presidency moves to the South in 2023. Well, joining us to discuss this is Sir Ayo Okwadokun. He is the leader of the National Democratic Coalition, NADECO. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Okay, good evening. Yeah, yes. It's interesting that um, Mr. Biseni is saying that um, the Southern um, members in political parties should not accept party chairmanship. But unfortunately, um, the PDP has zoned its national chairmanship as we speak to the South, meaning that um, there is no hope in terms of zoning the presidency to the South. Well, I'm sorry that uh, I don't want to be drawn into this discussion. You know, that's not, that's not the... Yes, but, but Afeni Ferry uh, has been a group that is asking is, for no, power to... I'm bring... not, a, I'm not a member of Afeni Ferry. I've been at Afeni Ferry since 2001. But you're I'm, a southern I'm leader the and... and... General, general, I'm general secretary and a spokesman of the National Democratic Coalition at Beko. Well, I, but the truth so, is, it, it, all of the southerners are asking for yeah? the same thing. Whether it be Afeni Ferry, whether it be Nadeko... Even the southern governors have come across political parties to ask for a southern presidency. Nadeko is not really interested in any partisan posturing. Our concern is that until Nigeria returns to federal system of government, election is not our priority. 2023 is not our priority. And I ask the question, what has Nigeria got, got positively on the various elections that have been held in the country since 1998? How many elections have been held? How has those elections impacted positively on the Nigerian people? So we don't want to get involved in on this unproductive venture. We, 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 our concern, seriously, is that Nigeria secured its independence on a federal constitutional arrangement, which recognizes the fact that Nigeria is an heterogeneous country that has over 350 ethnic nationalities with their different languages, different cultures, different customs, different traditions, different religion, different artifacts, different folklore, different morals, different morals and the likes. That is, and when we had that, all the wickedness, all the atrocities that have been witnessed in the, in the last, uh, since the army said a violent military uh, insurrection against the civilian regime of Alaji Tababalewa, who was the prime minister, we are not witnessed by them. So we want a restoration. That is the only the constitution, the 1960, 1963 constitution remain the only <laughs> all the degrees made amount of by the military they remain illegitimate. They are product of our legality. In fact, they are treasonable till tomorrow. So we don't want to get involved in uh, this unproductive venture. Let me ask, um, because you say you do not, that, that the, the election process is unproductive and you are interested in a democracy. What is a democracy without an election? And if you are not happy with what is happening, what has Nadeko been doing for the past election cycles? What advocacies have they pushed? And how powerful, what breakthroughs have you gotten? Because it's not enough to say, well, we're not interested in this thing because it's a an exercise in futility. But what are you doing to change that process and make it 
an exercise that would pay the process? As a, as, as a journalist, I expected you to be aware that I remain the convener of the Coalition of Democrats I know this. Reform. This is public knowledge. And I know we, this. We, 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 we but I'm asking you now, I'm putting you on the spot, go. sir, because you are on national TV. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing. We know what you do. Every journalist who uh, knows so, so about why, Nadeko why, why knows you what asking, you're doing. I think, well, well, I'm not... But I ask again. You can't just say that the exercise is an exercise in futility. What do we do if we want a change of sorts and we, we haven't gotten that change? Because we're going to keep having elections because we are in a democracy of sorts. And if you say that these elections are worthless and it's something that you don't want to exert your energy on, where does that leave us as a country and as a people? At all. You, you know, you see, you're, you, you, the, the oppressors, those who are unduly benefiting from this so-called election are the ones uh, trying to gulotin the entire populace that election is the answer, whereas it is not. Because they know the machinations they fit into, into it. And the kind of people that will be so-called, who will be able to use stolen funds, to bribe the electorates to vote for them, to bribe the electoral officers to manipulate the result, to bribe the security agents to look the other side, and to even bribe the election tribunal to confirm illegitimacy to their illegitimate so, so called victory. Uh, uh, so, those are not the kind of things that work the way of people like us at this stage. We, 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 we commit too much for the current. Uh, you wanted a democratic system. What you now have is a civilian government, not a democratic government. So nobody should be deceived. People like us cannot be deceived. There's nothing democratic in what's going on. And so it takes me back to what I asked. Yes, we, we know that there are people who are not happy with the system. Nigerians obviously are not happy. And you and I are in this country. We've seen all the um, things that have played out in the past few years, even before this administration. But when we say, again, that the system is rigged, is rigged against the average Nigerian, is rigged, rigged against us, it's now us versus them, according to what you're saying, that these things no longer interest you. I'm still asking the question, where does that leave us? Because you, you know, you, you sound more like you've been there, you've done that. Uh, so what do we do? Throw our hands up in the air. How do Nigerians try to unrig this system that you think is rigged against us? No, no. Nigerians, have, Nigerians should be ready to take their destiny into their hands. How? Um, what do they do uh, on each streets in each hamlets? They should mobilize themselves for street action to demand that the current system is unsuitable and unacceptable and that they will not vote in any other election. No election will be conducted again until we return to the federal system of government upon which the Nigerians secure this independent. That's the, the, the basic document upon which Nigeria was admitted into the Committee of Nations for the United Nations Organ Organization. So all that we are doing is an illegality. And because we have submitted ourselves cheaply as subservient people to the dictates of the military junta, that's why we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are today. It is, it is time that we, we win ourselves over from the oppressors. And that's what Nadipo started on June 11, uh, for the June 12th of, of, the, of the, this year. We wrote an open letter to President Buhari talking about the atrocity that he has committed since he got into office. And we... We also know that you wrote uh, a letter in June of 2021 to Nadeko and you sent an SOS to the United Nations over President Buhari's government. But um, I don't know what reactions that um, the Na United Nations would bring to us. They would only continue to advocate. But I'd just like to take your mind back to October of 2020. That was the last time Nigerians who seemed fed up 
emptied into the streets. And you can see that we're still going back and forth on what happened at the climax of that protest, which was not just about ending police brutality, but it was also asking for good governance. So when you say Nigerians should no longer vote, they should um, ask for or get some action done, you have seen how every time Nigerians want to protest or Nigerians stand up against something, the full might of security and the government is seen at those spots. Look, uh, well, I, I don't know uh, how old you are. I, but when I speak, I speak from the, for the best of intention and from experience. I, want, I, I remain the general secretary and, and, and spokesman of NADEPO. We did this it since 1994. We protested. We were harassed. We were not, not the same. And we never related. Nobody will give you your rights. Chiefly on the plot of, plot of gold. You must fight for it. Every day you stop fighting for your rights. That you that day your presence will continue to man, to do you better harm. You must be ready to face uh, the, uh, the, um, the the oppressor squarely that you are fed up with with conduct. That is why nations our nations are built. But if you are crying, you are just lamenting every day, lamenting. Lamentation will not solve your, your problem, and it's not happy. I'm, I'm in. Your presence will be happy that you are lamenting. I, I, I might not be as old as you, but of course I am informed, just as you asked me how old I am. But I'm going to still again tell you that there are people who were killed at the Lekito, we're not going too far, just last year, because they came out, in your words, to continue to press home their demands. As we speak today, where are the people who are supposed to support, to continue to, who's going to stay if they see bullets flying over their heads? Who's going to let their child or which man or woman is going to come out? Let's be, let's be realistic since we're saying let's, let's be realistic. How many Nigerians are going to stay the course? We've seen Occupy Nigeria. We've seen all of these things. How many Nigerians are willing to come out and press on their demands? Stop preaching. Stop preaching this homily to people like us. I say to you that anyone who wants to get secure his rights, must be ready to die for it if, it, if, if, if that is what it costs. There are, there are times in the life of any nation where people should be ready to be martyred for the advancement of that community. When there is nothing like that, when nobody is ready to take the, the bullets to sleep in police cell, and you want to, your right to be given to you by the oppressor, then you better go home and sleep. Just surrender. Ha, interesting. So, um... I'm also expecting that we will see more people from Nadeko occupying um, the streets or uh, occupying National Assembly. You, you will, you will, uh, you, you see, that's, uh, I, I'm 75 today, by, by, by the, 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 the last month, by the grace of God. I've spent the last 75 years doing the same thing. I've never related. So you, you, cannot be, you are not the one to be asking Nadeko to, to come. The, our, our affiliates are already busy doing something. Oh, I think we lost that connection, unfortunately. Um, Mr. Padoko, are you still there? Let's just wrap this up. Are you still there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, quickly. So, in closing, for every Nigerian who's listening to you now, um, finally, as we leave, because we're almost out of time, you're saying Nadeko has been doing this. Like I said before you went off, uh, that connection was off. I know that in June of 2021, Nadeko sent an SOS to the UN over President Buhari's government. Um, and, of course, there have been so many other memos that have been going out of the country complaining about the government or the system of governance in Nigeria. But as we speak, we see a lot of people leaving Nigeria with this brain drain. We're seeing our doctors fleeing. There are lots of people who are running away from this country. And you're saying that if we're, we're not ready to take bullets and sleep in police stations, then the, the times may never change for us and the country will continue to go in the direction that it is going. What's the motivation that the average Nigerian who's watching you should take home from this conversation? They must be ready to take their destiny into their hands. You have to organize and mobilize to resist oppressors. If you are not ready to do that, then surrender. All right. Um, we want to say thank you, Sir Ayo Kwadoku is of Nadeko, and uh, he's been our guest tonight. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, and uh, apologies for the connection issues. Thank you.
All right, thank you very much. Well, we want to thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. Unfortunately, we do not have more time to continue talking. Uh, well, I am Mariana, and we'll see you tomorrow. Again, as the week is wrapping up, we will bring you a roundup of all our conversations so far. Good evening. <laughs>